Hello, my name is Linda McEnany and welcome to my show. My guests today are Christy Campbell. Christy is the director of the Cole County Health Department and Jeff Davis. He's the chief executive or officer of the Community Health Center. You all are, are connected at the hip, so to speak, mm -hmm. in your businesses. So thanks for taking the time to, to join us and uh, catch us up on what's going on with your two organizations. I think what's happening right now is very exciting. What, what's going to be taking place between your two organizations over the period of the next year, year and a half, whatever. Uh, before we hear this wonderful news about the organizations, uh, Christy, why don't you tell our audience about the Cole County Health Department? Sure, I'd love to. Thanks again for having me, Linda. It's our I pleasure. think that our uh, health department does a lot of services that a lot of people in the community don't realize. That's probably my favorite thing about public health is that we do a lot of things behind the scenes to keep the community safe that most people don't know about. I think some of the services that people obviously uh, recognize the health department for are being able to come and get your birth and death certificates, being able to come and get immunizations. We do have some family planning services and WIC, which is the Women's Infants and Children's Program that is for uh, women that are pregnant or families that have children that are under five. And it's really a full service program that's not just about getting those vouchers for certain items from the grocery store, but it's also nutritional counseling. And we have um, three um, breastfeeding peer counselors that are, mm. that are internationally certified. So that is a big program that really helps those women, those families, you know, know how um, to feed their children, what supplements they need, how to keep those kids healthy. And then, of course, we have our environmental programs. Out in the county, we do restaurant inspections. Jefferson City has their own ordinance, so they take care of the restaurant inspections in the city, but we do the restaurants out in the county. We also inspect the child care facilities in the county, and we permit and the repair and installation of on-site sewage systems for residential homes. And we also inspect all the lodging establishments in the city and the county. So if you've stayed in a hotel in Jefferson City, we've been there and we've inspected those rooms and made sure that hotel is safe. We also do some uh, residential water sampling. If you have a private well and you're concerned about the quality of the water, we can help you with the testing of that. And we respond to emergency, emergencies involving food. If there's a, a fire or a natural disaster in uh, facilities that are affected that might serve food or the hotels, we would respond to that. Or if there's a truck wreck in the county that has food on it, we would go and inspect the, the load to make sure that nothing that has been adulterated would enter commerce, to make sure that that food is gonna be safe to go to the grocery store or uh, to, the, to the retail warehouse or what have you. Uh, another service that we provide that most people don't know about is we have an adult brain injury coordinator that actually services 15 counties out of Cole County, and uh, her name is Shallon Schoenhart, and she helps individuals that have suffered a traumatic brain injury get, get their lives back. She might help them find a job, she might help them find a doctor, she might help them find someone that can teach them the life skills that um, they might have forgotten after that traumatic brain injury. Wow. So that's just a snapshot of what we do there. Did you have any idea that the Cole County Health Department was responsible for all these things? Oh, I mean, you learn something new about them every day. <laughs> I know, that's amazing. I was going to focus on the services primarily out of your facility, but, but I guess part of it, you mentioned WIC, but right. who, who, can, who qualifies for your services? Well, part of the services over on the clinic side, anyone can come in. We take most major insurances for immunizations, and of course, birth and death records are available for anyone. And anyone could stop by and get like a um, head lice check or blood pressure check or any of those services. Um, the requirements for WIC are on our website, but it is 185% of poverty level. Okay. And like I said, it's those families who have uh, children under five or pregnant women. Right. And by the way, we might mention right now, if, if you have questions with regards to the Cole County Health Department, you can call 573-636-2181, or your log, you can log on to your website, and right. that is... It's colehealth.org, and we also have a Facebook page. We also have a few other programs, like the Show Me Healthy Women program that helps provide cancer screenings for oh. women who might not have insurance. 
And uh, we also have a safe crib program where we can provide a safe place for a baby to sleep if a family um, doesn't have a safe crib for them. And they all have their specific um, eligibility requirements, but we can go over that with anyone who's interested. Wow. And how is, where, where does the funding come for all these wonderful programs? Um, we have a mix of funding. The majority, of course, is from county revenue, but we have quite a few contracts and grants or participation agreements through the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. And then we have a little funding from the Missouri Foundation for Health. Oh, wow. Well, how long has Cole County Health Department been around? It's actually been around since 1916. Last year, we celebrated our 100th, 100th anniversary, anniversary with a 5K and a, a fitness events for kids. So we are a little over 100. And, and how large a staff do you have? We have 24 staff right now. Wow, they do a lot they of do. things. Most of the nurses, actually all of the nurses wear at least two hats. You know, they, they work down in the clinic and then they also have specific programs that they uh, are responsible for, like the chemical disease program, where if there is a reportable disease in the county, which there's over 100 reportable diseases, our nurse would follow up with those cases to make sure they receive proper uh, vaccination or their contacts were identified and we made sure that the spread of disease was stopped. We also have nurses that do um, child care health consultation and go into daycares and do classes for the kiddos and the providers. We have someone who just follows up on sexually transmitted diseases. We have someone who works with the maternal child health program. So a lot of staff wear two hats and do multiple programs. Wow. How long have you been with the Cole County Health Department? I've been the director since October of 2013. Wow doing an excellent job. Well, thank you. We're going to talk about uh, a very exciting opportunity for our community that involves these two agencies. So if you'll stay with us, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Donna Scheidt with the Jefferson City Daycare Center. The Jefferson City Daycare Center is a licensed daycare with an accredited early childhood education program. We care for up to 99 children ages birth to eight, primarily from low and middle income families. The Jefferson City Daycare Center, providing quality early childhood education services in a caring environment. We're proud to be a United Way partner agency. Find us online at www.jcdcc.org and like us on Facebook. Family Counseling Center of Missouri offers a number of therapeutic and psychiatric services at 204 Metro Drive. Our mission is to improve the quality of life for individuals, families, and communities by helping people make positive changes in their lives and empowering them to make healthy and effective choices. Our focus is building healthier lives together. Call 573-634-4591 or visit us online at info at FCCMO.org. FCC is proud to be a Compass Health organization and a United Way partner agency. I'm Ann Littlefield. I'm Claudia Kehoe. And we're here to represent the Food Bank of Central and Northeast Missouri. Over half of the Missouri students qualify for free or reduced lunches at school during the week. But on the weekends, many children go home to empty refrigerators. The Food Bank provides buddy packs, backpacks full of nutritious food, so over 6,600 hungry children have food on the weekends. But the need is much greater. Will you help? When you adopt a buddy, you reach out to a child in need. Your 50 cents a day will make a difference in a child's life. Visit www.sharefoodbringhope.org or call the food bank, 573-474-1020 to adopt a buddy. Lincoln University and JCTV are now on fiber optic cable courtesy of CenturyLink and Prism TV. Uninterrupted high quality Prism TV delivers JCTV to Jefferson City and Columbia on Channel 99. Big thanks and much appreciation to CenturyLink, their staff, and Prism TV from your friends at Lincoln University and JCTV. Jefferson City Access Television for Jefferson City and Columbia. Now on Prism TV, Channel 99. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. My guests today are Christy Campbell. She is the director of the Cole County Health Department. And Jeff Davis is the chief executive officer of the Community Health Center of Central Missouri. And once again, thanks for joining us. And you know, the purpose of us being together is that they are in partnership on an opportunity for the future. So. We're going to talk about that right now because I'm very excited about it. First of all, Jeff, we talked briefly in the last segment uh, about uh, an opportunity of growth 
and change for your organization. Tell us uh, what's, what's going on with that as far as the new location, et cetera. So we uh, have purchased a facility over off Christie Drive. You, uh, many in the area may know it as the old Frontier Insurance Building. So the, the big okay. black building over there off Christie Drive is uh, the facility that we purchased, and that's where we will be moving our, our main clinic operations. Um, it allows us you know, a, a substantially larger clinic than what we had. Um, it's actually 27,000 square feet over there. And so really what we're doing is we're going through and we're just kind of gutting the whole thing. You know, really we're keeping, I think, the elevator shaft and that's about it. Everything else is kind of coming out of there. <laughs> and the roof. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we'll be able to, to keep uh, some of the, the existing structure, but then allows us kind of a blank canvas to really design our, our clinic to meet the needs. Um, so all of our services will be going over there. We will be doing medical. We will be doing dental. We will be doing behavioral health. Um, our existing partnerships with Capital Region will be coming over there. Our partnerships with Pathways will be coming over there. So really, we're, we're kind of just doing a transplant of everything we're offering over at our current facility, and we're going to be locating it in the new facility. Um, it, the new facility is kind of more in line with where our patient population lives. When we were running some analytics on where our patient population is coming from, that area really seemed to be more of uh, the center around where, where our patients are coming from. So hopefully, you know, transportation is a significant barrier to a lot of the patient populations that we're seeing. And so if we can be closer to them, so maybe they can walk or anything along those lines, maybe it makes it a little bit easier for them to, to access our services. So we felt the move over to, to that side of town was, was in our best interest and in the best interest of our patients. And so we, we're, we're excited to be moving over there. Well, transportation, I think, is a, a very important issue in both your businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do have a bus system, and, and both facilities, uh, old and new, are on the bus lines, but the buses only run certain hours of the day and certain days of the week, and that always can become a problem, can it not? It certainly can, you know, and we had, we had noticed that, you know, there was a, we could tell when the bus, you know, when the last bus came by our, our existing clinic because we saw a drop off in the number of patients, you know, sure. we saw a lot of patients that, you know, if they couldn't get in before the last bus came, then they didn't come, so a lot of our later in the day appointments were going unused because of the, of the transportation issue, you know. We really try and work as, as closely as we can with a lot of uh, the, the different resources we can find out there on transportation. So, for example, a lot of the Medicaid managed care companies will pay for those patients, you know, mm -hmm. transportation, but they have to know how to call and they have to mm -hmm. know who to call and they have to, you know, coordinate all those things uh, to make sure that the transportation issue is addressed. And that's where we have staff now that really help them, you know, identify those barriers sure. with the patient. So if we know the patient has a transportation issue, we'll work with them to line that up ahead of time so that they aren't always so reliant on, you know, the, the different other systems. So sure. we really try and work through a lot of those barriers like that. Do you have any idea, and I know it's early, but do you have any idea approximately when the moving will take place? You know, we got all of our, the bids are supposed to be back this week. Uh, we filed for all of our permits, um, and so we really just kind of have to work through some of that stuff. We're still kind of, you know, trying to dot a few I's and cross a few T's on all, uh, some of that stuff. But, you know, we're shooting for a move-in of next summer, so we're really working hard towards that so that we can get out of our space and, and, and Christy can, can kind of have her staff kind of okay, get ready good. to move on in. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk about the impact really on both, both organizations that this wonderful move will have. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I am Shelley Locke with Child Care Aware of Missouri. We are committed to helping families find child care and early learning programs that meet their needs. Finding the right child care or preschool is one of the most important decisions parents make. We help parents understand the types of programs available and the state's licensing rules. We also provide tips on what to look for when you visit possible programs for your child. Call us today at 866-892-3228 or visit us online at mo.childcareaware.org. Child Care Aware of Missouri. Missouri's most trusted child care resource. The Boys and Girls Club works to enable all youth, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring adults. Success is within the reach of every young person who enters our doors. We work with youth to ensure they achieve academic success, develop good character and citizenship, and have a healthy lifestyle. Boys and Girls Club of the Capital City. While some doors just open, our doors transform. Great futures start here. Find us online at bgcjc.com and like us on Facebook. We're proud to be a United Way partner agency. 
Hi, I'm Kurt Probst and I'm a big brother. Missouri Valley Big Brothers Big Sisters desperately need your help. Right now, more than 50 children are waiting for someone to spend time with them, waiting for a mentor. By spending time with a child, you can change their future and improve their chances of succeeding in life. All it takes is one hour a week. Call Missouri Valley Big Brothers Big Sisters at 634-3290 to get involved today. We are proud to be a United Way partner agency. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, my guests today are from the Cole County Health Department and the Community Health Center, and we're talking about an exciting opportunity that's about to take place, at least over the next 12 to 18 months. So if you have questions, by the way, about the Community Health Center, pick up the phone, call 573-632-2777, or you can visit them on Facebook. And with regards to the Cole County Health Department, that number is 573-636-2181. And, and they also are on Facebook. We just heard how the opportunity for expansion and improvement and transportation, et cetera, will be for your organization, uh, Jeff. And, and I know your current square footage, I'm not exactly sure, but moving to a facility that large, you're gonna have a much easier transition, are you not? Yeah, you know, we're, it's, it's added space that we'll be able to add and provide more services. But the big thing for us is, you know, like I mentioned earlier, is that we're going to be gutting the whole thing. And so it's kind of a clean slate. And, you know, designing the workflow so that it's efficient mm. and effective. You know, we really focus on the team-based care, on, you know, and really setting it up where, you know, the, the, the providers of, of multi-specialties multi can kind of work together and really designing that flow so that it works. So, for example, one of the things that we're doing on the, with the providers, uh, they don't have offices, they have pods. And then so oh. the, the OB-GYN, the pediatric, the pediatrician, and then the dentist are all going to be in the same area. So whenever they all go back to their computers, they're all, you know, sitting right next to each other so they can collaborate and talk about it so you know we stress so much that you know our patients become integrated we're really trying to integrate our providers as well so whenever you know the dentist comes back and said you know I've really got this patient that's anxious or is having a hard time with their blood pressure or whatever they can just turn around and talk to the provider next to them and say hey can you see this patient real quick or something along those sure. lines and so you know really the space design is going to be so much more effective and so while we're adding space we're also you know designing in a manner that we can be much much, much more efficient, effective, and truly be that integrated healthcare home that, w that we strive for. So we've been making it work, but I think it really, you know, with some redesign, this is really going to allow us to really take that integration to the next level and really em embrace that team-based sure. care. In it. And, and, you know, I'd not thought about that, but that's such an important part of providing good health services, is it not, is being able to communicate with each other. Uh, you're especially maybe this, but this, the patient may need not only this, but they need that as well. And having that coordinated communications, if nothing else, so that's, mm -hmm. I can imagine that that's very important. Christy, I know this move opportunity yes. is going to make a major impact on the health department. What changes do you see at this point? Just having more space is going to be the first thing right now. Our facility is about 7,700 square feet, and we're going wow. to move to the community health center space, which is about 17,000. So the biggest thing for us is going to be making it more client oriented. Right now we do not have a space where we can have community classes, whether it's about nutrition or food safety or for the child care providers. And we'll be able to have a big space where we can host those community classes that is really a need in the community. Another opportunity will be to have more um, immunization rooms. When it's back to school time, our clinic will just be busting at the seams and we have very small clinic rooms. So if a family will has, you know, a couple kids and maybe one in a car seat and a diaper bag, getting squeezing in one of those immunization rooms is very, very tight. So we're hoping to have a family IMS room that'll have a little space for the family to spread out, maybe a few toys for the kids to keep them occupied and distracted while they get those back to school immunizations. And then the biggest change will be in our, in our WIC clinic flow, that women's, in, infants and children's program. At the current time, we have one room where all the kids are weighed and measured. So, you know, if there's several families there for their appointments, it can you have to wait for that room to be mm -hmm. available. 
and then if they're there to see a nutritionist or a breastfeeding peer counselor, those staff see those clients in their offices right now. So they might have a situation where the family goes back and has their child weighed and measured and you know, the staff person they need to see is not available. So they have to go back out to the lobby and wait. And then when the staff person's available, then they go back into the, the clinic area and see that staff person. And it can be cumbersome for those families who might have a couple little kiddos or a toddler and a baby in a car seat and a diaper bag. And, it's, it's very cumbersome for them. So we're wanting to really make the new clinic flow be very client oriented and we will have several rooms where the, the clients will go to the room and they'll get weighed and measured and see the uh, appropriate staff in those rooms. Our staff will come to them. They will even be issued their vouchers or their EBT cards that WIC is going to write in that room and then they will be um, a, escort, escorted back out. They won't have to go from room to room to see all the staff that they need to see. So three big changes I can see, but I know that for our staff just having extra space and being able to serve our clients better is going to be a wonderful opportunity for us. Well, I can imagine. Do you anticipate, I know it's early, but do you anticipate that you might be able to add some additional services or is it a matter of right now we're providing a tremendous number of services mm -hmm. and we're going to wait and see what's what opportunities are available in the future. Yeah. We, we hope to provide more services. We've actually surveyed some of our clients and we've asked around the community you know, to see what those needs are that we could fill. And we would love to hear those ideas from staff. We've also been ex exploring some really innovative things that no one else around here is doing, like a milk depot for breast milk. We've talked, to, like I said, about those nutrition classes, other classes, just things that no one else is doing that we could provide that the community really needs. I had no idea that you didn't have a, a, a room to provide these, these educational classes. No. That's got to be tough. It is. Right now, our only conference room is on the second floor, and that's where all our administrative offices are. So for confidentiality reasons with all the medical records, we can't really have a lot of people up there. And it's just not really accessible for mm -hmm. people with families to come up the stairs. We don't have an elevator in our current building, so they have to access the, the second floor entrance. And it's, it's just difficult. It's going to be a lot, lot better at the oh. new building. A lot of wonderful changes. Oh, yes. How did this whole collaboration come about? I think the commissioners had been looking, the county commissioners had been looking for a new space for us for a while. Um, when Sam Bushman came on board as presiding commissioner, he saw how cramped we were, and the other commissioners acknowledged that we really needed more space as our building, you know, continues to age. Sure. It was really showing that, you know, we needed to either invest some money in our building or get us a new space. So they, they were actively looking when this opportunity with the Community Health Center came about. And I think you probably had the opportunity to meet with Sam and the rest of the commissioners. Did we did. You know? you know, they had came over for a tour, um, you know, kind of, you know, as we were trying to educate folks, you know, we, we like Christy oftentimes are, mm -hmm. you know, kind of people don't realize all the services that we provide. So, you sure. know, anytime we have an opportunity to talk to people about the services that we provide, we try and take advantage of that. So commissioners were over. Um, they were taking a tour of the facility. We were talking about the different services that we provide. Um, we were talking a lot about the existing partnerships that we had had with right. the Cole County Park right. Health Department, how we had, you know, we're trying to find ways, more and more ways to work together. You know, a lot of the patient populations that we see are the same patients. Mm -hmm. And so how do we, you know, integrate services and collaborate? You know, I think the initial plan was let's try and, you know, locate a facility where we could co-locate. Sure. Um, you know, just by the sheer size of both organizations, we were unable to find a place right. uh, that, that would facilitate both organizations being mm -hmm. co-located. But then when we were able to identify the the property on Christie Drive that would, you know, would meet our needs, you know, it kind of logically fell in place that, you know, well, if we were going to be moving out of our facility, then it'd be a great fit for the Cole County Health Department. You know, it's already set up like a lot of medical exam rooms, mm -hmm. so a lot of the renovation stuff wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't have quite the near the renovation budget right. that they would at, have at a typical spot. So, you know, it was kind of a, a perfect storm. So we had to, you know, kind of jump through lots of hoops and try and figure out, you know, mm -hmm. ways to get creative and make it work. But, you know, in the end, I think we were able to do so. And I think, you know, both organizations and the community as a whole is, is stronger by us being able to collaborate and work together. Absolutely. And, and, you know. I know it's early, but I'm going to ask both of you, do you anticipate you, you will have to shut down for a period of time while this move is, is being made? Or is that yeah. still up in the air? It's still up in the air, but I anticipate, you know, if, I guess if it happened to fall on a three-day weekend, that would help us a little bit, but, and, um, you know, we're going to try to do as much pre-work as we can, but I would imagine that we will have to at least be down for a, a couple days. Sure. Yours and is probably more. Yeah, you know, nothing, 
makes me more upset than closing clinics. You right. know? Um, well, so, you know, that's what, you know, our patients are out there in their need. And so we are going to do everything we can to not shut down, you know, so when it may be, whether, you know, how I could see it working out is more of a staged move. You know, mm -hmm. there may be some people providing services over, you know, we move one, one, two providers and then one, two providers, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of, you know, be more of a staged move because, you know, access is the key, you know, because if my clinics aren't open, we're going to the ER for a hangnail. And, you know, that's just right. not, just, just not how we want to do business. That's not how we want to, you know, our patients to do. So, you know, we're here to serve. We're here for the patients. And so we're going to do whatever we can to make sure that we, we're, you know, however we can make it work, we're going to try and make it work. Yeah. Well, I think for both organizations, it's a wonderful opportunity for growth, but also a wonderful opportunity to provide services. And, you know, Christy, you and I were talking earlier, I, I, just the very thought of, uh, of the improvement for mm. the staff yes. to do their job uh, more efficiently, mm -hmm. not better because they're already very good, but right. more efficiently will make a tremendous change, will it not? It will make a huge difference for the staff. They can um, treat the cl clients more effectively, just provide better customer service. We'll also be able to, like you said, provide more services and collaborate more. Um, for a time, the Community Health Center of Central Missouri tried to provide dental services at our facility using that portable dental chair, and the room was so small, and it, it was just very cumbersome. So, you know, one of the things we've talked about is being able to still offer some dental services at our facility um, for those, specifically for those WIC clients. So I think that we'll be able to provide our services better and also collaborate with partners and be able to provide more services. Yeah. Jeff, anything else that you might want to add? You know, I think, you know, one of the things that I, I failed to mention was that, you know, right now our administrative offices are not in the same location as our true. clinic. And, you know, and I think, mm -hmm. it, you know, this new opportunity will allow all of us to be under one roof. And I think it's, you know, very important for the people in administration to see patients as patients, not numbers. And so when you walk in every day and you see the patient and you can realize the good you're doing, as opposed to just getting certain phone calls on the on the phone, you know, with complaints or anything like that. You know, I think it's important that we put a face to what we're doing because, you know, like I, like I mentioned before, we're here for the patient. And so I think, you know, the more we can be right there with the patient, we can be in the trenches and we can see, you know, the effects of what we're doing and, and the people we're serving. I think I think it's very powerful. And so yeah. being able to have those offices over there, I think will will do a world of work help for, you know, the administration uh, staff as well. Well, our, our community is so fortunate to have both of you in your leadership positions okay. and doing what you're doing, having the vision that you have and the commitment to our community and their health care needs and all the other needs as well. We're very fortunate. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you next time. Good night and God bless.